Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Trinidadians get the assurance that the COVID-19 vaccine is safe. This story takes the lead in our 1016th edition of Caribbean Perspective for Tuesday, 29th December 2020. Details when we return. Welcome back. Nationals of Trinidad and Tobago are today being assured that the COVID-19 vaccine is safe. Medical Director of Palliative Care in the U.S., Dr. Ravindra Maraj, said he got his COVID-19 shot over a week ago and all is well with him. He believes people should not be afraid. TV6's Charlotte Kisco reports. He shot, but since then I've been perfectly fine. Speaking on TV6's... The day after, I just had some soreness at the site of the shot, but since then I've been perfectly fine. Speaking on TV6's Morning Edition program, Dr. Maraj says the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the potential risks. I would, and um, I have a few reasons for it. One, the science behind it seems um, uh, robust. Even though the vaccine is new, the, the, the groundwork and the research was over two decades old. And also in my capacity as a palliative care provider, I've seen people who've been infected with COVID and the effects it can have. From a risk-benefit perspective, the, 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 the benefits of the vaccine vastly outweigh the possible potential risks. Despite the many unknowns about the new strain, Dr. Maraj believes the new vaccine will still be effective. Research is still being carried out. I think in a few weeks we should have a better idea, but it seems that a lot of the mutations, um, some may be affecting the spike protein, which allows the virus to fool your immune system to get in your body. Some mutations have been happening there, but the, uh, the experts in the field have said that it may affect the efficacy of the vaccine, but instead of being 95%, they've been estimating that it would be about 80 to 85% effective, which is quite good. From Jacksonville, Florida, Dr. Maraj was in high praise of the Ministry of Health. I have to congratulate all the efforts that have been taken place to educate the population. I've been seeing it from a distance. I've been seeing the work of Dr. Hines, Dr. Parasram. Um, I've also been seeing a lot of local folks taking personal responsibility and making sure they do the right thing. Trinidad and Tobago is expected to receive the new vaccine by March 2021. Shala Kistu, TV6 News. Senior Minister with Responsibility for Finance in Guyana with the Office of the President, Dr. Ashni Singh, has revealed that as of August 2, 2020, the consolidated fund of the country was in overdraft by some 79 billion Guyanese dollars, while the bank balance at the central bank was in the red to the tune of some 93 billion Guyanese dollars. HGP's Wendell Badri has details. These overdraft balances do not include payments issued and which are yet to be cleared, the minister further stated. In fact, the consolidated fund account was in overdraft in the amount of $78.7 billion. And I might add, sir, that that amount would not have affected as a doctor checks that would have been issued, but that had not yet been cleared and therefore would not yet have been reflected in the bank balance. Dr. Singh was at the time responding to a question posed by APNU AFC Member of Parliament, Annette Ferguson, during Wednesday's sitting of the National Assembly. The Minister further spoke to bank balances for the country at the Central Bank. The overall picture of government bank accounts at the Central Bank were to be taken. The government's net overdraft position on that date would have been a staggering sum of 93 billion dollars. Singh said that the figure also did not include payments issued which have not yet been cashed. He went on to state that the figures quoted ought to be contrasted with the PPPC's balances when it demitted office in April 2015. And that April 2015 then we demitted on the government was a net depositor at the central bank with an amount totaling $16 billion in the, in, in, in the aggregate of government bank accounts. 
In persisting with her line of questioning, Ferguson inquired how it was possible for the government to go about accumulating sums for its emergency budget, as well as a number of capital projects inclusive of the COVID-19 cash grant distribution exercise with the nation coffers empty. The minister retorted by explaining that government collects revenue on a daily basis through taxes and other forms of revenue-generating exercises. While that forms part of generating funds, it is not the only way for the government to acquire funds for projects, he explained. He stated that external grants and loans also constitute ways of how revenue is garnered by the government for spending on projects. Singh further highlighted that the International Monetary Fund, IMF, had also highlighted in one of its annual reports that the accumulation of overdraft by the government to the country's coffers was a matter of grave concern. Singh stated that there are a number of other examples to show the country's state of indebtedness while speaking to a $12 billion arrears to the Ghana Power and Light, as well as a $30 billion bond for the National Industrial and Commercial Investment Limited, NISIL, of which he stated that $17 billion have already been drawn down. I cite these only as examples to fill the spirit that in addition to the overdraft that is accumulated in the state in fact is in much deeper indebtedness than is reflected in the overdraft of the Central Wendell Badry, HGP 19 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. A minister in the Jamaica government warns that anyone in breach of the COVID-19 protocols will be prosecuted under Disaster Risk Management Act. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of National Security, Matthew Samuda, says anyone who breaches quarantine protocols will be prosecuted under the Disaster Risk Management Act. His warning comes amid heightened fear that the new strain of the coronavirus could reach our shores. We've prosecuted over 3,000 people who have breached the RMA order. But when there is deemed a, a level of risk that, that forces us to put on, but we um, allocate more resources to following it up. So say, for instance, somebody is wearing an arm man and is side boy, in a business with the Samago Beach. Tell me what happens. Well, the RMA act is specific. You can be you can be fined by a court of law if found guilty of breach up to 1.5 million. We haven't had anybody fined um, in that region as of yet, but I think when one considers the health risk and the security risk at this stage, yeah, I think that's what the public would be would be supportive of. Mr. Samuda was responding to Radio Jamaica's Beyond the Headlines host, Dion Jackson Miller. Tuesday evening. Meanwhile, Chief Medical Officer of Jamaica, Dr. Jacqueline Bessessa McKenzie, said on Wednesday last that Jamaica had already started seeing an increase in COVID-19 positive test results, even as the holiday season was not yet in high gear. TVJ's Ocean Masters reports. The Christmas surge that medical experts feared is happening now and is beginning to consume well-needed resources like hospital beds due to the rise in positive cases. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bessesa McKenzie says the rate of hospitalization has been increasing. The, the slope is not steep. We are seeing a slow increase in the number of cases, um, and so we continue to monitor. Um, remember, we would have put in several um, mitigation exercises to, so that the impact would be reduced. And with the new strain of the virus now affecting the United Kingdom, Dr. Bessesa McKenzie says nearly all of the 302 passengers who arrived from the UK on Monday have been tested. So we came, I think 302 came in, four were in transit, and we had five children that we did not get consent from the parents for testing. And so I think we ended up testing about 293 persons. She added that children who arrived on Monday were not tested. We had taken a decision based on the discomfort of the test, um, <clears throat> the fact that it is sometimes difficult to control the children, that we would not have tested children under 12 years old. In the meantime, she says, the ministry has heightened contact tracing for persons who arrived in the country within the past five days. So what we have done in light of this, we have re-alerted, if you can call it that, our medical officers of health, to look again at their list of persons, see their arrivals from the United Kingdom, ensure that they are closely monitored, and of course, early testing for those that develop symptoms. 
For Shane Masters, TVJ News. The new COVID-19 variant spotted in the UK has caused a chain reaction of many Caribbean destinations to ban UK flights for the short term. Jamaica is no exception according to the country's tourism minister Edmund Bartlett. More in this TVJ News item. And Tourism Minister Ed Bartlett says although the decision to ban UK flights will be hard on stakeholders, it was necessary in order to manage the uncertainty caused by the new COVID-19 variant. In an interview with the media in Montego Bay Tuesday, Mr. Bartlett said the government is doing the right thing based on the circumstances. We understand that from time to time we have to make decisions that are strong and sometimes on the spur of the movement because we are trying to manage an uncertainty. And in the process, it is not always that everybody feels comfortable about it, nor does it um, not cause some pain points. What we want to ask is everybody understands and that you know, all the sectors that are impacted understand that the government is doing the right things in terms of what the circumstances require and that in every instance our actions are to protect the people of Jamaica. He says he understands the challenges small hotels will face. The small hotels are the ones who hurt the most when decisions are made in this way because uh, the UK traffic tend to favor EP and smaller hotels. The, the larger hotels are hurting too and hurting Badly, as you know, because they have to deal with a large number of rooms with costs spread across each room. And when the room count is low, then suddenly their costs just balloon um, and it, it creates a problem. But all of us have to share in this process, in this moment of, of trying to, to manage and to save lives. <music> I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.